not really. <laughs> uh, I kind of started off, you know, playing rock bands and blues bands, and uh, uh, but I was really interested in, in improvisation from early on in high school. And so, you know, people like Bowdoin Art Ensemble in Chicago, Peter Taylor, you know, at that time, to Korea, and Anthony Braxton, and people like that. Uh, so I was like really interested in kind of free jazz, uh, even before I started to get into classical music. But I always felt that there was a connection. Uh, somehow, like I would go to the, you know, music, you know, I usually bought these, you know, I got interested in this music because I used to collect records. You know, I would go to these, you know, like early on in junior high school and high school, I'd go to these record stores and I'd see like these names, like amazing names, Sun Rock, Pharaoh Saunders, or, <coughs> you know, Polonius Monk. And those names like totally attracted me. Just like when I would see like, you know, Stockhausen and, and uh, you know, Pendrecki, I'd see these names and they kind of just perked out. They, they'd have interesting album cut of art. So I kind of get them. And then I kind of realized as I was listening to both these music that there was like, they were in the same zone. But they were completely being made in a, in a different kind of way. And I could listen to Archie Chef Thomas Knight, or I could listen to. Uh, Boulez's Marteau or Improvisation Sermalama. And, the, the, and I, the reason I brought that is the improvisation. So at first I, I was thinking, well, they are improvising this shit. I couldn't believe it. And then I realized, okay, this is all written. But I heard similarities between like Archie Chef's On This Night, which was like this kind of 12 pound piece with a singer, and listening to like the Martel or Improvisation by Boulez. I, I felt like these guys were like in the same zone in a lot of ways, even though they were working in completely different ways. And it took me a while to realize that. One of the zones was, they were, you know, was notating. You know, they were notating this shit. And then the other zone was these guys were improvising this shit. And so I thought there was a similarity, but I kind of came, so I felt like since I didn't have a background in Afro blues music, which a lot of the um, people like Archie Chef and John Culture, these those monks, those people were coming, or Sun Ra, they, they were coming out of this kind of blues based uh, background and then kind of went out from there. And for me, I felt like I needed a technique because I didn't have like the, I didn't grow up, you know, re really studying like chord changes and things like that. I felt like a classical thing would be a, a way to go for me to look at a tech grounded technique. So I started that, you know, early on in high school. And, uh, but I kind of got into it because I felt like there were these two worlds that were almost very similar. And then, you know, obviously, you know, when I was in college, I, you know, uh, pieces by Christian Wolf and Earl Brown. <coughs> Pauline Oliver, Ellis and Terry Riley already started to deal with ideas of improvisation and indeterminacy in their music. I started to get that right away from the classical music thing. But as I said, you know, like you could listen to the Marteau and you could listen to, you know, Chicory Circle and hear similar, you know, almost the same kind of music in a lot of ways. Very pointillistic, virtuosic kind of play. And I also kind of made a relation with Stravinsky in that way. And so to me, I felt like classical, there was this strong connection somehow with classical music and improvisation. And so that tends my interest in learning, sort of going more in the classical route. Does uh, that make any sense? Can I ask a question? Go ahead. I was asked to jump in. I mean, <coughs> invited to jump in, so I will. Um, you know, the thing of, <coughs> I think, you know, a composer like Boulez is probably really influenced by an African aesthetic in the same way that Debussy was, or French sculptors and painters were in the early part of the 20th century. But <coughs> so I, I don't consider their their music to be kind of completely cut off from that aesthetic. But the kind of connection you see between, say, Chick Corea or On This Night and and Le Marteau makes total sense to me. I agree completely, but Boulez would never have any direct connection to improvised music coming from the jazz realm, do you think? N not Boulez, but Stockhausen, certainly, Barriel. These people heard, these people were knew about John Coltrane, they knew about Thelonious Monk, they knew about Charlie Parker. I, just, I, 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 I bet my life on it. Uh, that these people heard giant three jazz orchestras in the early 60s. Uh, Stockhausen certainly, the burial certainly, you know, was experimenting these things. I think that they were informed, um, you know, and, and certainly composers like Alvin Curran and, and Frederick Chevsky and um, a lot of those generation of composers who are now in their 70s, um, <coughs> or 
even older, Terry Riley. These people were informed, these people were listening to jazz. They were listening to improvised music, and they were influenced by it, even if their music was completely different. Even somebody like Steve Reich was experimenting early on with, like, with third stream. If you go and look at Steve Reich's masterpieces at Mills College, it's a total third stream piece, meaning he wrote a kind of a, uh, he wrote like a piece of new music for a jazz quintet for bass, drum, saxophone, piano, and trumpet. But he wrote a kind of a modular type piece uh, you know, he experimented. He was also listening. You know, all of these composers early on were certainly influenced or, or had in their heads these, these things that were going on in, a, in the jazz world, even though they weren't working in the same way. Now, for Les, probably less so, but certainly I know it for a fact that you know Barrio and, and Stockhausen were definitely aware of what was going on in America. You know, in the early '60s with the with the music of Ernie Coleman and John Coltrane. Sun Ra and these people, and certainly do, and even earlier Duke Ellington, and, uh, and I think that, that that music, maybe they didn't study it, but they certainly knew about it a little bit. Just like I would say on the opposite end of things, uh, Anthony Braxton and people in the Art Ensemble in Chicago, and certainly Eric Dalby, I know for a fact, you know, were listening to Lucas Foss and Stockhausen, and were influenced by that music and by classical music, or not influenced, but were somehow informed, it was in their ears, and then hence, when you hear the music, just if you were just given blindfold tests, you you could just hear the you could hear that these guys were are these women and guys and children were all working in similar uh, somehow in a sonic area that was that they were sharing, even if it was by accident. We were they were all interested.